Good morning. Far and away, the most common muddy point I had for the recent lesson was in regards to timing diagrams. And so I have a couple of frames here where I'm going to work through example timing diagrams. And I focus on two of these gates in particular because those are the ones I had the second most questions about. So let's get to it with this simple example. So anytime we are given a circuit, which in this case is just a gate, and a timing diagram to complete, well, I want to identify what the name of that circuit is. So this one is a NOT gate, and NOT logic is simple. Uh, y, your output Y, will just be the complement of whatever the single input is. So Y equals A prime. And in this case, I'm given a timing diagram that has a second input, B. That's not even part of my circuit, so I can just ignore that. So all I have to do is focus on A, and then translate A into Y through the NOT operation. Y is the complement of A, so the whole time that A is equal to 0, Y is going to be equal to 1. And then about this point, A jumps high, so Y will drop low. It'll remain low as long as A is high. And then at the end, Y jumps back up high again. And you can see that A and Y are mirror images of each other, because Y is just the opposite of A. All right, let's look at the next example. So we see this gate and we immediately identify it as a NAND gate. Okay, NAND is kind of a confusing logic at first because it's not a word that we use in the English language. So helpful in this situation is to make a little truth table. I have two inputs and so those input columns, always gonna read this way. Do a straight binary count. And then NAND is the opposite of AND. So we do an AND operation first, and then we NOT the result. 0 AND 0 gives you 0. You NOT that, and the result is 1. 0 AND 1 is 0. You NOT that, the result is 1. Similar for this next row. And then finally at the end, 1 AND 1 would give you one, and then we not that, which would give you a zero. So that would be my NAND truth table output column. If I were to look at, say, an AND gate, let's just make another column, well, then your truth table would look like this. So my output V from the NAND gate is always just the complement of AND. That helps us understand what NAND logic is, but I'm going to cross that out so we can focus on just this V column as I fill out this timing diagram. So first thing I want to do is just identify the, the different sections in time. So I'm going to draw these dashed lines coming down from any changes that I note in the input waveforms. Oh, and that's another thing I should have mentioned. You can't complete these timing diagrams if you don't know what the inputs are. So A and B have to be given to us or have to be controlled by switches on a physical breadboard. So if we don't have that information, there's no way we can compute what V must be. And you can see the advantage of having a straight edge if you're doing this by hand. So pardon me if my lines are a little crooked. Okay, so in this first time slot, A and B are both low. That takes us to this row of the truth table, which tells us that V must be high. We get to this next time slot, A is high, B is low. That would be the same thing as this row of the truth table. And so V remains high. Next time slot, A and B are both low again. We already cover that one. We know that V remains high. 
Next time slot, A and B are both high. That is the bottom row of this truth table. So B drops low. And then finally, A is low, B is high. That would be this second row. So V jumps high. So I hope you see the point that uh, there are many ways of representing a logic operation. We can write it as a truth table, like you see here. And the truth table just summarizes for every set of inputs, what must the output be? A timing diagram just applies that to a given situation. For this particular set of inputs, zero and zero, what must the output be? In that case, it's one. And we just repeat that for every separate time slot we have. Of course, I could represent logic in gate form, like you see up here. I could also represent this in algebra form. Like you see there. Okay, one more example. And here we have a three input exclusive OR. Okay, what does the exclusive OR operation do? Well, we discussed in the video that this would be the odd function. So exclusive OR serves as the odd function, which means that if an odd number of inputs are high, then the output is going to be high. I could make a true table for this, uh, but I don't want to spend the time doing that by hand. I would need eight rows since there are three columns in this, or three inputs in this true table. So I'm just going to use that rule of thumb for the odd function. If an odd number of inputs are high, then the output will be high. So in this first time slot, 0, 0, 1 are my inputs. Only one of my inputs is high. Therefore, the output will be high for that segment. In the next time slot, again, I just have one input that's high, and that is uh, this A value. B and C are both low. An odd number of inputs are high. Therefore, Y remains high. In the next time slot, A is going to be high, B is low, and C is high. That's an even number of inputs that are high. Therefore, my exclusive OR operation drops low. Next time slot, one, two, all three of the inputs are high. That's an odd number. So my output jumps high. And then one more time slot here, zero, one, one. An even number of inputs are high. Therefore, my exclusive OR operation drops low. Okay, I, I hope you found this quick review useful. Uh, you can see how I reason through these timing diagrams when I'm working it by hand.